I'd like to say good evening to those who are joining us in our weekly Bible class at St. James Cumberland Presbyterian Church in America. St. James is located at 920 West Moulton Street in Decatur, Alabama. And so we are we are trying to continue as close as we can to our normal schedule in, in morning service and Bible class. And we've been talking uh, and we've been studying Romans. And so we, we are the last chapter. And we're going to uh, concentrate on chapter 16 today and, and complete this book of Romans. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to have another day. And Lord, allowing us to come back together to study your word. And Lord, we thank you that you've put it in the hearts of, of men to write down your desires for mankind. And Lord, help us to understand your word and rightly divide your word. And then once we study and, and rightly divide it, let this word penetrate our spirits and our souls. Let, uh, let, it, be better, let it benefit from the studying of your word that we might be better stewards of the time that you've given us on this earth. We want to line up with you. We want to be a light in this world that's filled with darkness, Father. So, Lord, we ask you, Father, to please take full control, Father. And, Lord, you be the teacher today and use this vessel that I might be able to be a blessing to your kingdom. And, Lord, we be careful to give you the glory, honor that you deserve. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we're in... Uh, chapter 16, and we've been dealing with Romans, and Romans is dealing primarily with salvation. It points out how we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and there's none righteous, no, not one. But then uh, you, you gave your son to redeem us from destruction, and because we accepted your gift and we came to you by faith uh, we have become justified those of us who has who have accepted this free gift that you offered us and now we're in a period of being sanctified you know because we are in christ uh, we have a chance to be a part of this uh, death and burial and resurrection and so we are justified and we're being sanctified and one day we will be glorified so because of what you've done for us, uh, we are trying to live a life uh, that's acceptable to you because in, in appreciation for what you've done. So um, we are uh, working for you. We're trying to further this gospel that uh, you reconciled us and given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we're trying to tell other brothers and sisters to be reconciled. But then the last chapter that we studied uh, was a very important chapter. It talks about how those of us who have matured in the faith should be sensitive to those who uh, have not learned as much as we have. And then we ought to make a sacrifice, not to confuse them, but to have patience with them and as others had patience with us and allowed us to learn from them, uh, then we ought to have patience with those who are still immature. And if we are doing something that can cause them to uh, not be able to, we mess their minds up to where they think what we're doing is evil, such as eating certain foods of uh, the day that we worship then the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. We ought to be trying to do what we can, even if it means us missing certain things when we're in their presence. Because Christ died for them, and so we ought to be willing to give up certain things so that they won't be confused. So this is where we are today. Paul, at the, in this last chapter, is giving us an example once again of how our lives should benefit people other than ourselves. A Christian is, is supposed to be part of the body of Christ. 
And in your body, you want everything to be working uh, in unison with the other parts of the body. And when you have something that's working in conflict, you, you, you have a malady in your body. And, and so you want that to get back in line with the rest of your body. So Paul, in this chapter, is summing up this letter to the Romans, and he is uh, commending many of the people that he has worked with. And uh, because of his statue in the church and, and the respect that he had, he is paving the way for others, and he's letting other people know of the blessings. You know, uh it's good, even when you're raising your family, you have to correct uh, your children at times. But all your children see of you should not just be correction. You ought to let them know that, that you appreciate when they're doing things that are right. And this is what Paul is doing. So in chapter 16, verse 1, it starts off with, uh, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church, which is at Sinsria. So Phoebe, this word servant is closely related to deacon. We have to be if you, if you dig into this word, you can see where there were very many women that worked very closely and they were very important to the start of the Christian church. And so Paul uh, is lifting up in this first verse, he said, our sister, Phoebe, who is a servant and we're going to see that Paul had all kind of confidence in this woman. She's a servant of the, ch of the church at Centria. Centria. And, and we have many different uh, uh, words here that I may or may not get correct. But then the second verse said that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatever business she has need of you, for she has been a helper of many and of myself also. So Paul is really giving her a strong recommendation. Paul is sending her uh, with this letter and he's he's that he trusted her enough to to uh, bring this this to this church and he he's telling the church to receive her just like you would another saint you know we ought to have brotherly love the bible said love your, your uh, neighbor as yourself so paul is saying give her the same treatment, basically he's saying, as you would give me, I'm sending her. And so she has business that she has to achieve when she's in your presence and in the city. So any kind of assistance, any kind of help that you can give her, any, anything that she needs, I want you to supply it for her. Because she has been a blessing to the kingdom. She's helped uh, many people. Don't you wish that, don't you hope that other people can see that in you? Most of all, don't you hope that God can see that you've been a blessing to a number of people? Paul says she's been a blessing to many people. And she's also been a blessing to me. So the first person that Paul is commending, the first person that he is lifting up today is a lady by the name of Phoebe, who is, uh, some people, I've, I've read some people that say she was a woman deacon. But anyway, she was a servant. She was a person that was very instrumental, a person that 
was working mightily in the kingdom of God for the furtherance of the gospel. She was a woman who was very actively working in the ministry. But then verse 3 said, uh, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Uh, Aquila and Priscilla, they were closely related. Paul, uh, on one of the missionary journeys, they, had, they were some of the converts and and they had the same trade as Paul. They were tent makers just like Paul was. Paul worked as a tent maker. And he got very close to this couple. They are, they were a married couple. Uh, and and they were working. After they got converted, they, got, they went to work for God. And so Paul is saying that, uh, you know, greet them. They are my helpers. They've been uh, very helpful to me in what I've tried to do. And if you look at scriptures in many different places, you can see where they were working with Paul and they traveled with him and Paul heavily depended on them. And they were, uh, even in, on one occasion when Apollos, a very polished speaker, he was very eloquent in his speech. Uh, they heard him and they took him aside, away from the crowd after, after he spoke. And they didn't chastise him, but they gave him more information so that he could be more effective in the delivery of the word. And that's what a brother and a sister should do. You shouldn't embarrass that person in the public. But if you find something that's uh, not quite on par, you ought to try to raise that, give that person the information that you have in love so that they can be even better at what they're doing. So that's what Aquila and Priscilla did. And in verse four, he said, who have for my life laid down their own neck unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Paul was called to be a, a an apostle to the Gentiles. His work was uh, to bring the good news to those who uh, had not had a chance to have the privilege. And Paul said, I'm treading on new territory. He was a missionary and he was establishing churches everywhere he went. So he was saying that these, this couple they were not so careful. You know, they, they, they followed the same principle that Christ laid down. Paul, uh, Christ said that if you come after me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. If you save your life, you'll lose your life. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll gain your life. So Paul had to suffer many struggles and Paul is saying that these two people, this couple, this married couple, uh, they have been right by my side, even when, and, and, and they laid down their life. In other words, they didn't count their lives dear to them. They, they uh, stared danger in the face to be a blessing to me and to the Gentile churches because this word was spreading to the Gentiles and uh, everywhere that, that Paul would be successful, the Jew, many of the Jews would come in and, and they would try to tear up what he was doing, but these people were willing to risk their lives to, for the furtherance of the gospel. And we, we have to examine ourselves. What are we willing to do for the furtherance of the kingdom. You know, sometimes I think we, we get too comfortable. Uh, we ought to be willing to pick up the phone every now and then and, and encourage someone rather than gossip. And we ought to be willing to, uh, you know, maybe give a, an encouraging word. Uh, today, it's not as dangerous. Uh, these people lost their lives uh, doing what they did for the Lord. 
And so we ought to be willing to make a sacrifice. We ought to be willing to sacrifice some time to study God's word. We ought to be willing to visit the sick and, and provide for those who are in need so that God's name can be glorified in the earth and people can see the love that we have for humanity and they'll be able to know that uh, you're different from everyone else and God can use you to open the eyes of some people who are blinded by Satan. So we are called to make a sacrifice for the furtherance of the gospel. We got saved by people who shared the word with us, so we ought to be willing to share it with others. But then uh, verse 5 said, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my well-beloved Ephra night Ephanetus, who is the first fruit of Asia under Christ. So Aquila and Priscilla also started a church in their house so that other saints could gather and study God's word and learn more about God and build each other up uh, in the faith. They open up their house but then he brings in this Ephanetus who he said was the first fruit. When Paul went to Acacia, uh, he was starting his ministry over in Asia. And one of the first people that uh, got saved through Paul's ministry was this saint by the name of Ephanetus. And so Paul is greeting him also. He said, my well beloved. So Paul had many people in his heart and we ought to be concerned about our brothers and sisters and we ought to have enough love in our heart to be willing to speak well. Some people want all the praise for themselves and, and sometimes they don't even want to praise God, but uh, Paul didn't think that uh, giving other people uh, accommodations and, and praise was taken away from himself. Don't you know that we're all in this thing together and Satan wants to divide us, but we ought to concentrate on how we can uh, stay knitted together and how uh, old folks say, used to say, if you can't say something good about somebody, don't say anything at all. But if you can say something good about them, don't keep your mouth shut. Every now and then, you need to let people know that they are appreciated and they are blessing to the kingdom. Uh, we're God's mouth, and, and, and God wants to use us to encourage our brothers and our sisters and to pave roads for them to be able to do ministry even when we can't get there. So we ought to be concentrating. We ought to learn from Paul how to share what we have with others. Paul was well respected, so he wanted to get, give these people uh, the same kind of respect. And he, he was encouraging other people to respect what they were doing for the kingdom. And then uh, in verse 6, he said, Greet Mary, who has bestowed much labor on us. I didn't learn much about this Mary, but there is a woman by the name of Mary that Paul is commending. And evidently, she did many things to make them comfortable. Uh, evidently, she did many things to assist them as they were on their missionary journeys. And he's, he's uh, greeting her and letting them know that she has done many great things. She worked hard on us. She might have been cooking. She might have provided a place for them to, lit, to stay. The Bible does not say, but she, he, Paul is letting us know that this woman has been a blessing to his ministry for what she has done for them. But then verse 7 said, Greet Anronicus and Juni, Junius, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles. 
who also were in Christ before me. Paul is commending this couple, and he said they're his kinsmen, and, and kinsmen is anyone that's a Jew, uh, not necessarily close blood relative, but all of Abraham's seed were, Paul considered them his kinspeople. And Paul says that uh, they're my fellow prisoners. Back then, Paul was well aware because he, he was the one that persecuted the church and he he bound anyone that he found calling on the name of Jesus and he carried them back to Jerusalem to have them stand before the judge and many people got killed and and and, and uh, they made sports of these people and, and so they were trying to stop the church. But Paul got converted when he was headed to persecute the church on at Damascus. And now he's suffering for the faith. Paul wrote many of these letters while he was in jail. So this couple had been working for the Lord also. And Paul said that they, are, they were his fellow uh, sailmates. They were his fellow uh, people who were in prison with him, my fellow prisoners. But then Paul said that they were apostles. Now, they were not a part of the first uh, apostles, but there were other people who were apostles and and he gives them that notoriety. And notice it was a husband and a wife or, or a, a couple or might be brother and sister. But uh, once again, this is a lady. Uh, Aquila was a lady and, and Phoebe was a lady and Janiah was a, was a lady. And they were very instrumental in, the, in this ministry that Paul was working in uh, to carry this gospel message to the Gentiles. Uh, so they they would Paul said they they really uh, preceded me. Uh, I was still persecuting the church when they were already doing the work of God. But then verse eight said talks about amp, ampliastus, my fe, my beloved in the Lord. Uh, he didn't say very much about this fellow, but he was he was very close to Paul. He uh, he was a brother in Christ. And then he said, greet Eubanus, our helper in Christ, and Stachy, my beloved. So these two were co-workers of Christ and a friend of Christ, I mean of uh, Paul. He said, my helper, he, he, he worked with Paul and he assisted him. And uh, Paul had very much, very much respect for these two servants. Verse 10 said, Greet Apelles approved of Christ. Greet them who are in the household of Aristobulus. Aristobulus. So Paul met Paul is uh, greeting this Apelles, and he said he is approved of Christ. Uh, this man had been had it had his faith tried and tested and he had uh, been approved you know uh some people can talk a real good game some people can preach a good sermon some people can uh teach a good bible class uh they can tell other folks how they need to survive but when uh they are tried and tested uh they can't pass the test and 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 even sometime and you know tests when we were in school taking tests, the test was for the teacher and it was also for the student. And until you're tested, you really don't know. You can think you know so much, but uh, when you're being tested spiritually, then you can really see how far you've come in the Lord. And this man had been tested uh, and he was a servant in in, in Aristobulus household. So Paul is greeting him and he's commending Apelles. 
Verse 11 said, Greet Herodian, my kinsman. He's another Jew. Greet them that are of the household of, of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. So uh, at, at that time, once again, the Jews were under the Roman Empire. And many times they served in houses. And sometimes uh, they had churches and houses. But uh, he's saying that this man was a Jew. He's my kinsman. Greet him. He's in the, And then there are other people in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. So he is uh, evidently this Herodian was a very special person of Paul. But Paul knew that there were other people who had faith who were in this house also. But then verse 12 said, Greet Typhinus and Tryphosa who labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved persons who labored much in the Lord. So these uh, people uh all three were women. Uh, some people think that the first two were sisters, this Ty Finnis and uh, and Tryphosa. Try Finnis and Tryphosa were likely sisters, and uh, Persis was more than likely a Persian lady. So all three were laborers in. This person, he gives her the distinction of the beloved persons who labored much in the Lord. So he is commending uh, these ladies for the work that they were doing in the kingdom. When we come down to verse 13, it says, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Paul, now this... Rufus was from Cyrene, and it is said that he was Simon's son. And we know the story of Simon of Cyrene, and it's thought that this may be his son. He had a brother named Alexander, who was also a worker with Paul. So Cyrene was a country that was from uh, Africa. And so Simon of Cyrene and, and Rufus and Alexander, so Simon is prominent because he bared the cross of Christ. But these sons were Paul's contemporaries, and they worked very closely with him. But then the mother. Evidently, Paul has spent much time around this family. And he says that Rufus' mother was just like a mother to me. This lady had shown him great kindness and treated him just like he might be her own son. You know, there are many people who are instrumental in our lives, you know, and, and, and they're not always our blood relatives. God sent people our way to be a blessing to our lives. And however, you know, she may, she, maybe she cooked for him. Maybe she gave him a place to stay. Maybe she even corrected him. Or maybe she might, might have even treated her just like she did. That's, he's saying she was Rufus' mother and she was mine also. So she was so powerful and she was so kind to him to where she acted like she might have been his mother. So we all have things that we can do to be a blessing to the kingdom. And, and what does God need? He doesn't, he doesn't need anything from us because God is self-sustaining. He, he's our creator. He's a, our sustainer. But the only way we can do anything for God is by doing it for each other. He wants us to be a blessing to the kingdom, and he wants us to be a blessing to one another. And when we are a blessing to each other and encouraging each other, 
then that's further in the kingdom of God. You might not ever be on the stage, but uh, uh, you might not ever have your name in lights. But there is something that God has placed inside of you that can be a blessing to the kingdom. Sometimes the people that are behind the scenes, they mean more to God than those who are on the stage. Because it, it depends on why you're doing it. And, and are you doing it from a heart of gratitude to him? Or are you doing it just to be seen? Some folks want to be recognized for everything that they do. Uh, but the things that you do in secret, God said he'll reward you openly. So God is rewarding uh, this lady because she was just like a mother to his apostle who was caring. He was risking his life. Paul might have come to her beat up. You know, Paul got, got beaten many times. He might have come to her uh, hurt and she might have ministered his wounds. So she was a blessing to Paul. But then we have uh, it's a greet a sink Critus and and Philia gone, the brethren and, and and Hermas and and Patrobus and Hermas and the brethren who are with them. So he, he called three uh, four names here. Uh, he's saying greet this this group of brothers. But then verse fifteen it said greet Philios. Philagos and Julia and Nireas and his sister Olymp and Olympus and all the saints that are with them. So we're going to stop here, but Paul is calling this group also. And many times they had uh, churches in their homes. And so Paul is saying that I want you to recognize how I've, what I see in these people. And once again, when God has placed you in a most special position of leadership, it shouldn't just be about you. But those who are working and doing good, every now and then you ought to let them know that you appreciate it then uh, and because every now and then you have to chastise and correct but then you ought to be willing to say that you're a blessing to the kingdom and let other folks know that you have respect for what they're doing for God because we're in this thing together and God wants us to be brothers and sisters and we're all God's children, and we need to encourage each other to continue this work that we, God has assigned to our hands. We're going to stop here, but uh, then we're going to take up uh, the next time we're together, and we're going to finish this chapter. We're going to start reading next week at verse 16. But once again, we, we invite you to continue to join us as we try to continue the work of God during this time of turbulence, you know, minute, much is going on and Satan is, is walking with a big stick now. So the church needs to be totally focused trying to carry this gospel message out to the people who are lost and they encourage our brothers and sisters as we face this time of trouble. God can work through anything. The Bible said all things work together for good. For those who love the Lord and for those who are the call according to his purpose. Many people are uh, being claimed, their lives are being claimed by this COVID-19. And families are grieving and then people are losing their jobs. And, and so we have to see how God can use every one of us to be a blessing and to encourage each other during this time. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for this time of study that you've given us. And Lord, we've tried to rightly divide your word. And Lord, we ask you, Father, if we made any errors to forgive us. And Lord, anything that we said that was right, we give you credit for it, Father, because we are made of clay. And Lord, our minds are uh, sometimes focused on this earth. 
But Lord, we want you to continue to use the Lord, continue to refine us that we might be able to give the pure word that would be encouragement and build up your kingdom. We're praying for the people that you've assigned to my hands, Father. And Lord, I'm asking you, Father, to help me to lead them in the right direction, Father. Give me the wisdom that come directly from you as I try to walk before them, Father. And Lord, we're praying for the universal church, Father. And Lord, help us to be strong during this time that people, people are looking for answers now. And Lord, they're not finding it in Washington, Father. But Lord, help the church to stand strong during this time that they might see you and want to give their lives to you. And Lord, we're praying for those who are suffering right now, lost jobs and lost uh, their health, Father. And Lord, we ask your Father to help us to be a blessing. And Lord, we're praying that you will continue to further your gospel through us. Pray this prayer in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. May God richly bless and keep you is my prayer.